and welcome to NKU's Drawing Lecture Series. I'm Mark Leone and in this particular lecture we're going to be demoing, talking about, working with the basic rudiments of linear perspective, in that case one point perspective. So today is a lesson on the manipulation of that space, maybe a little brief history as I discuss and draw as you're drawing along with me, why uh, perspective is so important from an artistic standpoint, from an engineering standpoint, but especially an image making standpoint, one point, two point, three point, and how these mechanics work, where we got it from, and then how we'll utilize it. So these lectures, one point, two point, three point, as we go through, will be the basic fundamentals, and later on if you want to get into more advanced study, we'll do that intermediate. Um, as well as your own studies and I can help you out anytime that you want. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to leave looking at are cubic structures because they can stand in the place of anything that you want to draw, whether it's a, a cube, obviously, or a building, or an animal, or a tree, or the human figure. They all can relate back to a simple cube, a simple sphere, and a simple uh, cylinder. So let me go ahead and, and start sketching a little bit so you can see that. So a simple cube, uh, you know, where do you know how to thrust the angles of a simple cube? Well, through enough time and exposure to perspective, we understand, we come to understand that this plane here is a very flat plane across parallel to uh, the audience, but this plane here moves back in space to a ending point or a vanishing point way out, maybe in this case on the horizon line. Later on you'll learn that it doesn't have to be on the horizon line. So these are important things to realize. So a simple cube, a simple sphere, you'll hear me say this a lot in class and out of class, and so there's the sphere here in a simple cylinder. You can build anything you want in a drawing and make it believable. Whether you're using human figures or not, or abstraction, etc. and so on, these, these become very important forms for the artist. Not only in drawing, but in sculpture, design, film, etc. and so on. So, after we understand these three basic forms, the next principle we want to start to understand is our point of view. Where are we located in relationship to the object? So I'm pretending like you are the one looking at the cube, which you are now. And so the next phase to understand is the cube in your relative eye level. Do you see the top or bottom? And if you don't see any of it, the form is then relative to your eye level. I can't quite tell where you're viewing it, but hopefully you're in top or bottom. Now, if the cube is below and you see the bottom of this one point cube as I turn it, as I move it to the side, notice I'm not turning it, so you're always getting that flat plane. If you see the bottom, or excuse me, the top of the box, it's in the ground plane. If you see the box and you can see above it and you can see the bottom of the box, it's in the sky plane. So all these relative positions, no matter what the box is doing, because later on I'll show you it can do all of this. So if it's eye level, it's in the sky plane, or it's in the ground plane, it can be controlled by perspective. So the first thing we have to realize is if we're sketching from observation or from our imagination, or theoretically, we have to figure out and know where our eye line or the horizon line is in our drawing. So uh, I'll write some vocabulary terms. Uh, horizon line, which is the same thing as eye level. Very important to know in one point perspective. Okay, so we've got that. So we're going to establish eye line and eye level. So let's do that first. Let me step out and get some material to draw with. So. As we're drawing, you draw along with me accurately as you can to my composition or my compositions as we as we draw here. So I'll um, I'll set out a picture plane 
uh, here. This will correspond to your, your drawing as well that you'll do. Your, your drawing will be 18 by 24. Mine will be bigger because this lecture is, is larger. It covers more space. So I'll set out my picture plane here. Yours is already just a piece of paper, so you'll have to bear with me for a moment. So I come down. And then I'll set in the bottom here my composition as we're working through. And so today we'll work horizontally. And you want to you want to draw a line. Like, so you know, one tip is to remember today is to draw your lines very, very lightly um, as you're sketching, sketching along. So keep that in mind. A light touch and very, very sharp pencil will help you out. Okay, so the first thing we want to establish in our composition is our horizon line or the eye level of the reality of this drawing. So I'll establish it today, draw along with me, roughly about oh, halfway in the composition. So we'll draw a straight line, horizontal line across the entire field here. And what we've established in one line is this. This becomes now the horizon line. I'll label that HL, but it also becomes our eye level. So I'll sketch a little eye over here looking in to signify that we are at eye level of the composition. This also creates the sky plane and the ground plane. So I'll put that over here, sky and uh, ground plane. Everything that happens up here is sky above eye level, looking up. Everything that happens down below here is looking down, and we're on the ground plane. So, what we're going to be doing now with this particular drawing is creating a one-point interior. So it's as if we're inside now this box score. I'm in my office right now drawing and I'm inside a cube. You're inside a cube somewhere and so we want to draw as if we're inside the form. One-point perspective will help govern that. So let's do that. And It's going to look like this. So here's our picture plane. We're going, and here's our horizon line. We're going to have a back wall, and then we're going to have walls coming out of this center point. I'll, I'll show you what that means now. It is to establish depth or dimension, the illusion of three dimensional space. The Italians, Brunelleschi, uh, later, Giotto in his late career, but certainly Brunelleschi throughout his career, established and helped codify linear perspective. So we put a vanishing point for now uh, on the horizon line. I'll label that VP and I'll come over here in my vocabulary and put down vanishing vanishing point. That's another uh, term to know. And all depth that is created by a form or space acting on a form will go back to that vanishing point. So here and here, that's the horizon line right there. And so that creates the illusion of three-dimensional depth. And that, in this case, this box is in eye level because we don't see the top or bottom. All right, so let's create our back wall now. So we want the back wall. You can sketch it out and then later on you can Tighten it up like I do. So we want it to be in the sky plane and the ground plane. We want that building to be firmly on the ground, but it's high enough that it's going to be above our viewpoint. So it's definitely in the sky plane. All right, so we've got that. We're there. So we can figure that out. Now we've got our vanishing point here. So let's start to use convergence lines. I'll put convergence over here as a vocabulary word. So convergence lines. And what these lines do is they help project our depth. They're like radar lines or sight lines in the composition, meaning that 
it's making visible what is invisible in a way. So from the vanishing point through the four corners of our back wall, that's where you draw convergence lines here and through here and through here and through the bottom, in my case, bottom right wall. And wherever they land out here, so be it, it doesn't matter. It's not important. What's important procedurally for this uh, very basic one point perspective uh, lecture is that they go through the four corners. They have to go through the four corners. Now, let me trace over the room here and a little bit darker red so you can see it here and here. And now what we've established in our drawing is the ceiling. This area is the ceiling. We have the left wall here and over. We have the floor here. We have the right wall. We have the back wall. And now because we can't see through, we still know the horizons through there. We have sky plane and ground plane. So now we have an accurate one point perspective room that we can start to place objects in forms in our composition. So we have eye line, eye level, we established sky plane, ground plane, use of a vanishing point, and now convergence lines to help our forms uh, in space to, to feel real and, and have the illusion of depth in one point perspective. Okay, let's start to now make some cubic forms. But we won't just stick with 